So up next, I'm making this older pattern from Vogue, very easy, uh, 8936. I did make it once before when I first started sewing and had no knowledge of how to sew with knits or really much knowledge with fitting. Um, but I like the simpleness of the dress. I think it would be great for everyday wear, running around doing errands, and it would be a very easy dress to pack for traveling. Um, last time I made the sleeveless version, which is what I'm going to make again because we're heading into summer. Um, and I only have 155 centimeters in length of fabric. It is uh, 60 inches wide. That's all I need for this dress. So I'm going to attempt it again. Um, last time I used elastic bias binding, which I'm definitely not going to use this time. This time I will be wrapping my edges with knit binding. Um, but this will be a very quick, easy sew. And um, I'll document it along the way. Okay, so I'm ready to cut out my four pieces. I have my center back or my center front, center back, both cut on the fold, and then two of each of skirt back and two each of skirt front. And then on here, you can see my chalk line. I've drawn um, a one and a half inch binding, uh, which I'll use to enclose the raw edges of the neckline and the underarms and that again is one and a half inches wide and that will give me a one centimeter binding finished binding all right so i have cut out the pieces for vogue 8936 very simple summer dress and the first step I always like to do is cut strips of trico interfacing in the direction of its stretch. And I'm going, this is glueable, fusible. So I'm going to put it around the neckline and the arm side so that the dress doesn't stretch as I'm wearing it too much out of shape. I'm also going to attach it to this seam line right here. So I'm going to put some interfacing along the bottom edge of the bodice because I know that this seam is going to be carrying the weight of the skirt. Um, so I'm also going to put a little interfacing there. So I'll iron that all on. And the next step after that, because I'm using a knit binding, which I think is the easiest way to finish off all these edges, I need to leave one shoulder open uh, for the neckline and then sew it up once that's done. And I also need to leave the underarms open so I can sew the knit binding on there. But I'll show that in the next step. So right now I'm simply fusing my Trico stretchable knit interfacing onto the neckline and the arm side. So I've added interfacing to the neckline, arm side, the empire waist seam, as well as the back shoulder seam, just to support the shoulders. I'll also put a little bit of clear elastic across the shoulder seams when I sew those. And that's what I'm going to sew next. So right sides together, the back and the front. I'm gonna sew one shoulder seam together and adding a little bit of clear elastic to that seam just to reinforce it. And of course, because this is a knit fabric, I am using my serger for most of these seams because it's nice and stretchy. I did want to show how I add clear elastic. I start with a few inches at the beginning, get the serger stitches on that elastic, sometimes by helping it through, by pulling on the tail. And then it starts nice and easily and goes right across the seam. And now I can just cut these tails off and it will be a nice, Nicely sewn seam there. So my next step, because I haven't worked with this fabric with this pattern before, I'm going to baste my shoulder seam and baste together my side seams and just try it on and see if I like the fit. And if I don't like the fit, I'll make a couple of adjustments. But right now I just want to try it on and make sure I like the general fit. 
and then I will add on my neck binding. So I'm just gonna baste my side seams and that one other shoulder seam together so that I may try it on. So again, I'm just adjusting where that shoulder is sitting on me. So I'm actually gonna bring it in towards center front by an inch and a half. So I've marked my inch and a half. This is presently where it ends. And I'm gonna take my French curve and simply redraw that curve. And then I'm just gonna cut it out. And I'm going to take my French curve again and take this in an inch and a half. And just kind of very gradually do a nice little curve and cut that off. And now I've moved my shoulder seam. Well, my, yeah, I guess you could call it the shoulder seam. So there. I've fixed that, and um, next time I make this pattern, it will be adjusted. So that's that. And then the quickest way for me to cut a little bit off that shoulder seam, I don't like it this wide, especially for summer, is to fold the bodice inside out in half. And then I'm going to take my French curve and simply start it about here and go in probably, yeah, an inch and a half, almost towards the middle. And I'm just gonna draw it in. This is my chalk here that you're seeing. So I am literally just going to take this, trace it like that, and take my fabric scissors and just come in and cut that off. And now I have thinner shoulder seams on my bodice. So my next step, of course, I said I had some gapping in the front. So I'm gonna take from this shoulder seam, I'm going to kind of at an angle, sew in about an inch, and that should get rid of the gaping that I had in the front. So now you can see I have the bodice fitted correctly. I actually brought the side seams in by a good two inches. Um, I have moved or cut off some of the arm uh, front bodice here um, to make it more summerish, but because it's a knit, you want it smaller than your actual body size so that it stretches over you nicely. And now you can see there's no more gaping anywhere. I've brought this seam in a bit underneath the arm and on the back. So this is my very messy back bodice, but I did wanna show how to raise that back waist seam. I'm gonna raise the seam a little bit on the side. Sorry, that's the um, center back. So I drew a line about half inch up and another line about an inch and a half up and I'm simply going to connect them. Just gonna draw, this is, has a slight curve in it. And then I'm gonna cut it off and that's gonna raise that back waist up just a little bit um, because in future I will be working with lighter knits. Uh, because this is a summer dress, I want it to be lighter knit. So I know that I'm always gonna need that. And I did the same thing with my front bodice. Here's my front bodice. And I wanted to raise that center front right underneath the bust. So I just drew up an inch from the side seam and just drew a line and cut it off. So how I'm going to fix it on my actual bodice is I've just drawn a line in chalk from the side seam to the center front where I want to rise or raise that area and then back down to the side seam. And I'll simply cut that off and then we will um, do the same thing to the back. I want to raise the entire back waist seam. So I'll do the same thing on the back. And then I'll take apart the bodice and we'll 
continue from there, but you have to get the bodice fitted before you put the skirt on. Otherwise, um, it'll be a lot harder. So fit the bodice first. Okay, I've made all the adjustments to my bodice. Again, it's a knit, so it's easier to fit. And you do want it smaller than the frame of your body because it's gonna stretch over your body. And it is a fit and flare dress, so that's the style of it. And I also went back, because I had cut off some, I also went back and added some stabilizer onto all the edges. Again, it's an extra step, but you'll be much happier with the end product if that's what you do. So the next step is the knit binding. You do wanna have one shoulder seam open and you wanna take your one and a half inch uh, knit binding, which you've just cut um, when you cut your pattern out and you wanna fold it wrong sides together. Now you can just do that. I have gone along and basted it every once in a while just to keep the folds in place rather than keep it clipped or pinned as I sew. And what I want to do is take my measuring tape and just at the seam line, just measure how long the entire neck edge is. And then you wanna subtract about 10%. So I'm going to just measure all this right at my seam line. And I have about 88 centimeters. So subtracting 10%, I want about an 80 centimeter binding. So I'm just gonna take my binding and cut it at about the 80 centimeter line, which is right there. And I'm gonna stretch my binding. I wanna give myself a little bit extra. So now I have my neck binding. And what I'm going to do is on the wrong side of the bodice, on the wrong, wrong side, on the wrong side, I'm just going to start at one edge. So I'm going to start at my open edge and I'm going to surge, or you can use a zigzag stitch. I'm just going to surge it on and I'm going to pull slightly so that it's a little tighter and it pulls the neckline in so the neckline won't stretch out. So again, you can use either a zigzag stitch or a serger and on the wrong side, you're just gonna surge this edge all the way to the other side, pulling it ever so slightly. Whenever I am sewing on a knit binding, I always, always baste it on first with a five mil stitch length because I wanna check it before I surge it. It would be a disaster to surge it on and then find out that you have some puckers. So I have basted this on and I'm looking at it from the right side to make sure that it is in fact nice and smooth. And everywhere I look, it's nice and smooth. You don't have to worry about slight wrinkling, as in right there, because when it's pulled on, it's going to be tighter and those wrinkles are going to um, not exist once it's on. But if it's really puckered, then I might, um, I might take it out. This one little area right here, I might just loosen that up slightly, uh, but that's the benefit of basting first and not surging it on first. So get it right first by basting and then surge it on. So I've surged my neck band on after basting it and doing a quick check to make sure that there was no big puckers or creases. And now the next step is simply, this is the easy part, is you're simply just gonna fold it over to the right side put some pins in, or in my case, some clips. And all you, and because this is a big neckline in terms of it won't have to stretch to go over your head, all you need to do is sew a straight stitch, just edge stitch, just along that bottom part of the band um, to keep it in place. And that gives a really nice 
a finished edge line to the neckline. So I'm gonna go around and just clip it all into place. I will use a walking foot to sew my um, to sew my straight stitch all the way just a millimeter in along the edge. And that's going to cover everything. So I'll do that and then I'll be back. So I've sewn the top stitching on the very edge of the knit binding. And um, there looks like a few puckers, but again, I'm not worried about those at all. When I pull it on and stretch it a little bit, those puckers will come out. So now I'm going to sew up this shoulder seam and then I'm going to do the exact same process for the underarm seams where I'll take my knit binding, sew it to the wrong side, basting it first, checking it, then serging it on or sewing with a zigzag and then turning it to the right side and top stitching it. And one little tip about sewing seams with binding in, which is really thick, hard for your machine to do because you have one thick end and one very thin side, is I always, always baste them together first or hand sew it together first before setting it through the serger. Otherwise, the serger is going to struggle as soon as it hits that thick seam. Um, so when you baste it together first, you get a beautiful matching seam and then I'll just hand stitch a little tack there to keep that seam flat. All right so I have run completely out of fabric for what I cut out the dress in and I didn't have enough binding so I took some other fabric that I have that's a pretty close color but not a match and I'm actually going to put the binding on the exact opposite way so that when it's finished, you won't see this binding. It's going to be on the inside. So I've got my inch and a half binding. I'm going to sew it right sides together. Um, or I can just use clips to keep it together, which is probably faster. <laughs> and I'm going to sew it to the right side of the bodice and then wrap it around to the inside um, just to hide it because it isn't quite the same color and I think it would be noticeable. So that's what I'm gonna do for my arm side. However, you can choose to do it whichever way you want. You can either sew it to the wrong side and wrap it to the right side, or if you don't want to see the binding, you can sew it to the right side and wrap it to the wrong side. So I have basted that arm side binding onto the right side. I just checked it just to make sure I didn't catch any puckers or wrinkles in it. It looks good to me. I think you can even see on the screen it is a slightly different color, which is why I'm going to turn it into the inside, which is what I'll do now. So I will serge it on right, right over the top of these basting stitches, which I've done and I will simply be wrapping it to the inside rather than to the outside. So I've searched that arm side on, and now I'll simply be wrapping it over. So I'm just gonna clip it into place, such as this. So it's gonna be finished nicely on the inside and on the outside. You'll see a um, seam line on the outside, but that's quite fine. It's the same finish as ready to wear. The only spot I'm gonna have to be careful of is this kind of bulky seam shoulder, shoulder seam. Um, so I'll use my hump jumper. I'll use my hump jumper and put that underneath my sewing foot to help me get over this seam without the machine straining. So when I finish this, I'll do the exact same procedure to the other side, and then we'll be ready to um, sew the skirt. So here's what my finished bodice looks like from the right side. I've got the binding at the neck wrapped to the right side and simply stitched with a straight stitch because that opening is not going to have any stretch to it to get it over my head. And like I said, I'd run out of binding. This one is a close color match, but not quite the same. So I just wrapped it to the inside and you just have a finished edge like that. 
I know on camera it looks like there's some little bit of puckering happening, um, which is okay. Like I said earlier, once that's on your body and stretches to your body, it's going to stretch right out actually really nicely and hug your body rather than gaping. Some tips for sewing uh, knit bindings. You can do this with a twin needle um, to give it that sportswear look and the twin needle will provide some stretch. Um, I definitely use a walking foot to do this because you're using so many layers of fabric all folded up. And I like to leave tails with my binding. So I'll start serging and start sewing on the binding and then right onto the bodice. And that's um, very easy for the sewing machine to accomplish rather than starting right on the edge. Sometimes if I find things are really sticking, I'll take a piece of tissue paper and sew with the tissue paper on the plate of the sewing machine and that will help it glide through as well. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing to the other side.